with her eyes open. Part 1 Chapter 1 Laurel let herself into her daughter's flat. It was, even on this relatively bright day, dark and gloomy. The window at the front was overwhelmed by a terrible tangle of wisteria, while the other side of the flat was completely overshadowed by the small woodland it backed onto. An impulse buy. That's what it had been. Hannah had just got her first bonus and wanted to throw it at something solid before it evaporated. The people she'd bought the flat from had filled it with beautiful things, but Hannah had never had the time to shop for furnishings, and the flat now looked like a sad post-divorce downsizer. The fact that she didn't mind her mum coming in when she was out and cleaning it was proof that the flat was no more than a glorified hotel room to her. Laurel swept, by force of habit, down Hannah's dingy hallway and straight to the kitchen, where she took the cleaning kit from under the sink. It looked as though Hannah hadn't been home the night before. There was no cereal bowl in the sink, no milk splashes on the work surface, no tube of mascara left half open by the magnifying makeup mirror on the window sill. A plume of ice went down Laurel's spine. Hannah always came home. Hannah had nowhere else to go. She went to her handbag and pulled out her phone, dialed Hannah's number with shaking fingers, and fumbled when the call went through to voicemail, as it always did when Hannah was at work. The phone fell from her hands and towards the floor, where it caught the side of her shoe and didn't break. Shit, she hissed to herself picking up the phone and staring at it blindly. Shit. She had no one to call, no one to ask. Have you seen Hannah? Do you know where she is? Her life simply didn't work like that. There were no connections anywhere. Just little islands of life, dotted here and there. It was possible, she thought, that Hannah had met a man. But... Unlikely. Hannah hadn't had a boyfriend. Not one, ever. Someone had once mooted the theory that Hannah felt too guilty to have a boyfriend because her little sister would never have one. The same theory could also be applied to her miserable flat and non-existent social life. Laurel knew simultaneously that she was overreacting and also that she was not overreacting. When you are the parent of a child who walked out of the house one morning with a rucksack full of books to study at a library a 15-minute walk away, and then never came home again, then there is no such thing as overreacting. The fact that she was standing in her adult daughter's kitchen, picturing her dead in a ditch because she hadn't left a cereal bowl in the sink, was perfectly sane and reasonable in the context of her own experience. She typed the name of Hannah's company into a search engine and pressed the link to the phone number. The switchboard put her through to Hannah's extension and Laurel held her breath. Hannah Mack speaking. There it was, her daughter's voice, brusque and characterless. Laurel didn't say anything, just touched the off button on her screen and put her phone back into her bag. She opened Hannah's dishwasher and began unstacking it. Chapter 2 What had Laurel's life been like, ten years ago, when she'd had three children and not two? Had she woken up every morning suffused with existential joy? No, she had not. Laurel had always been a glass-half-empty type of person. She could find much to complain about in even the most pleasant of scenarios, and could condense the joy of good news into a short-lived moment, quickly curtailed by some new, bothersome concern. So she had woken up every morning convinced that she had slept badly, even when she hadn't, worrying that her stomach was too fat, that her hair was either too...